Super exciting day, I think, in crypto in general. Obviously, we've got um, ETF approval coming through uh, in the last, I think, few hours. So that's definitely a huge update, I think, for just the general ecosystem of crypto. Um, that, that might even be a good place to start. Just a, a quick quick one sentence on what are our thoughts around that? I mean, obviously, a lot of people think it's bullish. Do, you, do people think it's priced in? Like, where... Where are we at? Is it, is it good news for the adoption of everything or is it more so that that's a, a control aspect, I think, from, you know, the banking world? What, what's uh, what's that general stance? Um, your spark, you don't dive in. Yeah, look, my thoughts on, on that are that, um, one, it gives validity to, um, to Bitcoin, but in a broader sense, crypto and blockchain with that validity comes capital. Um, and, you know, from, from fresh money, um, you've now got big players like BlackRock that are promoting Bitcoin. Um, and these guys have massive marketing budgets and, and trillions of dollars on, 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 um, on their books, right? So um, when you're looking at um, a company or an investment that, that want to diversify their portfolio, a certain percentage now will be placed into Bitcoin and depending on that percentage will depend on how many billions or trillions go into Bitcoin, because there are trillions and trillions um, across you know, these investment funds. Um, and even a 2%, 3% allocation means massive things for Bitcoin and I think the crypto space. What, you, what I think with the validity also comes, um, how that trickles down into to other parts of the blockchain ecosystem, into altcoins, into um, you know, other projects, is that uh, with that inflow of capital, normally what you'll see is um, when you have a look at inflow of capital into blockchain, it normally comes into Bitcoin first. And it's this waterfall effect that a lot of maybe a lot of the community may already know is that we, you'll, traditionally what you, we've seen is that a investment into Bitcoin, Bitcoin pumps, uh, trickles down into ETH, then trickles down into large cap alts, then trickles down into small cap alts. So it means that the, the liquidity, initial liquidity and investment that goes into Bitcoin will eventually flow down if history re repeats or even just rhymes, will flow down into other, um, other altcoins, other projects um, that with a lower market cap, um, meaning, you know, this is, um, this is great for the whole space. Uh, um, you know, with, with, with any, anything that has the credibility and, and the, the tick of approval of a company like BlackRock, it opens the doors for a lot of, a lot of other people to come in um, with, with, and give them reassurance. So I think it's bullish. I think for long term, it's really bullish. Um, and I think, you know, um, even with our ability to connect to Bitcoin, I think that's, even, that's specifically what it means for Layer 1X is, is bullish as well. Absolutely huge. Um, just as a quick reminder for everybody, uh, Discord settings are a bit funny at the moment, so if you can't hear anything, turn your music off. Well, I mean, you can't hear me if you can't hear anything. Um, but if that that would be a problem, is turn your music off. It seems to have a weird setting like that now, where it plays music instead of um, being able to hear people speak. Um, but yeah, to, to what you were saying, Spark, I think validity is the the biggest thing. Obviously, it, it places a level of legitimacy on uh, crypto tech itself, um, showing that now it's more accepted on a, on a world standard rather than sort of the DGENs just having to play around. So, um, I, I think, yeah, 2024, huge, huge potential. Um, and obviously this, um, uh, this X live space, very exciting to have, um, so many of the team on, you know, we're ramping right up into mainnet. I think it's 20 days is the countdown, um, until we're there. So I, I'd love to, uh, just, Basically, pass straight on over to Kevin. I know you've got plenty of updates for us. I know um, you've got so much to share. Obviously, it's a kickoff for the new year. This will be your, your first um, touch base with the community for the new year. So we'd, we'd love to hear uh, how, how things are going, how things are looking for mainnet, um, and any updates from your side. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always nice to be here. Happy New Year, uh, first of all, to everyone. <clears throat> I'll try to be on these spaces you know, more often now. Um, yeah, I think I just need to look for work, you know, after the main net release. <laughs> if anyone is hiring, let me know. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so just to dive into the, um, you know, updates with regards to what to expect from the main net, I have 
you know, made some notes um, and probably will release the summary of this as well. Um, so the first pointer is the L1X coins itself. Um, it will be transferable from one wallet to the other. So you can use your X wallet, um, you know, uh, and transfer it to the other wallet address. Now, <clears throat> it will also be used to pay for the gas fees. Um, you know, we've got L1X app, of course. We've got the balancer pool coming up, the gaming um, arcade, and the other projects that, that are in work. So it will be used as a gas fee over there. Um, as, you know, Chief is working uh, with the team on, you know, the centralized exchanges. So stay tuned for that. Um, you know, we're working hard to get this through to the central. It's 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 completely um, you know red tapeism over there. But anyways, stay tuned for that. With regards to the node, um, we are working on a module where you will be able to stake your L1X coins um, as a service. So staking as a service. Now this is for people who you know don't have a node NFT and um, you know just want to stake their L1X coin into the nodes. For the ones um, you know who have their node NFTs and who wish to host the node, you will be able to host your own node, um, you know, or provide your NFT uh, to someone who wants to host a node. So the manual for that and the way you can do that will be out sometime in February onwards. Um, <clears throat> we're making it simple, you know, even if you have a node NFT, we're making it simple for you to host the node as well. So there will be a dashboard where you can see, uh, you know, your rewards that you that you get by hosting the node as well. Um, as we see the demand for the node NFT, you know, you know, it's still ongoing. And I think uh, what we will be doing is we will be adding a few uh, event listener node and full validator nodes sometime next week. So the people who have missed out can also opt in um, if you wanted to do that. Um, um, I think I'm happy with the demand at, at this particular stage and with the, you know, projects building up and even with the, with the fact that, you know, we have our own Oracle system where the database uh, nodes um, or the full validator nodes will be able to store this information. It's pretty lucrative if you think about it, you know, with, in, in terms of the transactions that can be processed from these nodes. <clears throat> um, the next one is the expert module. Um, you know, make sure you participate, you know, into it so that your addresses will be whitelisted. So whenever you claim your L1X coin and if you have your L1X coins in your X wallet, you have to you know, participate in there or opt out so that we can whitelist your wallet address so it will you know, um, be transferable. You can use that address uh, to transfer. Just a little bit of stats, more than 70% of the people who have vested um, um, you know, have opted for platinum. So that is anyone, you know, even including opt out, so out of all these options, 70% of the people have opted in for platinum, which is vesting for 24 months, I think. That's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> the bonus for Jan, you know, will still be the same. So we are updating that module uh, with the updated wallet in the next 24 to 48 hours. And, you know, you will, get, you will be getting the same bonus upon vesting uh, that you would be getting in December. So appreciate the patience over here. We are also adding the referral module in there. So if you have your referral coins, you will be able to vest those coins as well. So stay tuned for more information on that. Now, coming to the projects and the developers, um, you know, we will be open sourcing the code. Um, you know, uh, a certain part of the code will be kept private, but um, the consensus code or the VM code, all the juicy stuff will be open sourced. We have also worked on the L1X wallet SDK and we have extended that feature to iOS and Android as well. So application developers can also use the wallet SDK if they want to interact uh, with the chain. Um, we are updating the X wallet um, as we progress. So, um, you know, all the bugs are being ironed out. And we really appreciate the community's, you know, patience over here uh, while we iron out these bugs. Developers and projects will be able to build projects, you know, by using the GitHub and GitBook and, you know, we are integrating Copilot that will make it easier for developers to build the projects. So uh, we're working on that right now. And I think we have to, you know, take a stance with AI. I mean, you can't avoid it. So let's just embrace it. Um, and <clears throat> once the Copilot is integrated as well, you know, giving summary on the documentation or 
even for example, spinning up a contract for the developers from VS code or from the developer hub itself will be made, you know, pretty simple. There will be three environments um, for the development. One is the local net where you build things and test it on your local system. Uh, one is the dev net, which is like the, you know, the Gorilla test net kind of framework where you'll be able to deploy your code on a dev net and there will be faucet available for that as well. And of course the main net version one. And I say version one because, um, you know, once we release this out as well, and, you know, the developers start pushing hard on the development side of it, um, <clears throat> we will be updating, you know, as we see any hiccups over there, just to make sure that, you know, uh, we, we, we are, um, you know, in tune with any bugs that have to be fixed. But as far as the development goes, we are streamlining, streamlining that uh, for each and every developer. We'll also update the documentation, which is the white paper and the Git book, where, you know, uh, technology update will be there on various modules, such as the consensus, the VM, um, you know, the types of nodes and, and so forth. We will be releasing the L1X core roadmap sometime, you know, next week. And it's it's more to do with um, rather than blabbering out about you know um, you know we're going to do this and that. It's more in tune with how you can use these new features with the existing features if you start building upon it as well. And that also includes uh, the integration of Solana and Bitcoin. So Solana is already available, so we'll be making it available sometime uh, this month or next month to the developers. But uh, the team is working hard on the integration. For Bitcoin, so we'll try to make that available next month as well. And what we are doing is we are taking the view of uh, you know academy style videos now. So, example, getting started with XStock, you know, build your first cross chain contract, uh, build your first uh, database contract, all these uh, sorts of things. So, academy style videos, which will be available on l1xapp.com as well. So it's like a series that we are doing over there. <clears throat> Coming to you know the L1X app because I kind of think of the L1X app as a way to introduce new features um, that is available on the L1X protocol in terms of how we think the L1X protocol can be used to the maximum as well. And <clears throat> the L1X app is being positioned as a service layer where you know developers or projects you know, who do not want to go through the hassle of um, <clears throat> using the core and building everything from scratch. They can use the L1X app service layer um, to see what is already built, such as contracts, and reuse them if they wanted to. So we've got the space CMS system, which was previously the object CMS. And it's pretty interesting because the space CMS system will be used by everyone. And the space CMS system is going to allow you to build uh, your Web3 websites. Um, so if you are an you know, everyday person, you just want to build a profile card for yourself, you want to share it with people around. Um, if you are a freelancer, you, know, you have some business idea, you want to throw it out to the people out there, you can build your website card, simple website builder. And this will be released um, you know, in the next week to certain priority list to go and start testing the system. And based on the feedback that we receive from them, we'll be extending the features to the other people as well. So please make sure you got your username because the people who have their username will have the you know, first access to it. We will also be adding e-commerce support on the Space CMS. And the e-commerce support is also in tune with the L1X core, where um, if you have your Shopify website or if you, if you want to sell a product, you can NFT that product and sell it to the people. But I think one of the most important feature that I am very excited about is the, um, you know, Galaxy cards, which was previously the bucket card. Um, think of it as your Web3, you know, data drive or your Web3 OneDrive, where you put all your information uh, only where you have access to it. And you can reuse that in, you know, while you build your website or if you want to share some information with someone, you can reuse this um, data that you onboard as well. Now, <clears throat> with the L1X app and to increase the adoption of the L1X core as well, what we are doing is this month we will be releasing uh, user-specific home screens. So until now on the L1X app, you've seen that 
it's a predefined home screen for you but in the new update you will have a home screen where you can select what you want um, on there as well and the idea over here is that anyone coming to you know work or being at home looking at web3 uh, products and services will have l1x app open as an everyday thing and you know which will help us you know uh, move to the l1x web browser as well the other component that we are including in there is um, you know we are trying to transform the explorer so until now the explorer you know you can see your transactions by following a wallet but what we are going to do in there is because people will start building their websites people will start importing their data and make it available for other people to see we are going to have the explorer transformed into like a web3 uh, you know search engine so if you want to search for someone if you want to search for a business you want to search for a product that has been built on l1x app you will be able to do that directly from the explorer as well but not only that with the help of the usernames you can add that person to your contact book and if you wanted to let's say share anything with your contact if you wanted to request for a payment you will be able to do that from your explorer so the explorer will have two things one is the search engine and the other is your contact list so you don't have to go you know back and forth between wallet addresses or um, you know use use google to search for certain things that you know you would usually do uh, the other exciting stuff coming up this month is the gaming arcade so we are working on integrating certain arcade based games for you to uh, you know start using it and again um, you know this one will be available as a priority list so if you have a username perfect you will be able to go in there and start utilizing this and the whole l1x app concept is being built around a gas tank where if you have l1x coins it will be used as transaction fee across the whole l1x app infrastructure so if you're playing games if you are wanting to build a website and host it um, you know you want to share information um, you'll be able to use l1x coin as the primary uh, you know fee <clears throat> we are also bringing email support um, to the l1x app.com this month so if you don't have a wallet um, you'll be able to sign up using an email and um, it's not going to be centralized because we are not going to link a wallet to the email yet so we have seen a lot of people who came on the l1x app.com did not have wallet installed so this is an entry point for people to get started with l1x app and later on because certain features won't be usable through the email you will need x wallet for that we will uh, provide an ability where you can transfer all your data from your email to your wallet address and get rid of the email so in this way it still remains um, you know uh, decentralized <clears throat> now what we are also doing is um, you know because the l1x app and the space cms is you know definitely something that influences uh, freelancers business owners everyday web3 users can start immediately utilizing uh, we'll be coming up with academy videos as well so for example um, how do you ditch um, you know the algorithm of medium if you're a content writer and you know when you write content on medium and share it on linkedin that's not your user so how do you write you know articles on your uh, cms or on your uh, you know space card and share it with the other people while that user is your uh, specific follower so we'll be coming up with these kind of feature based um, academy videos we've got one scheduled for tomorrow um, 4 pm awst so please register for that if you have it it will give you a good overview on what to expect from these space cards such as even the streaming services that we are integrating uh, you know for you so if you're a business you're an influencer and you want to stream you could stream straight away from your space card and the users coming in uh, you could provide them nfts and if the user did not have an nft you can uh, wall certain content so in this way until the user does not give you certain rights of their data um, you know uh, you can block content as well so it's like introducing you know websites on blockchain with ultimate control to the user end user but at the same time you know if the end user does decide to uh, you know give you the permission it is your user basically 
So I do believe that the space CMS will definitely be, you know, uh, one of the catalysts in the adoption process. Um, also, um, as I mentioned, the wallet SDK, you know, uh, we're releasing that as well at the end of this month where mobile application developers as well will be able to use it. So excited to see how, you know, the space CMS system and the mobile based wallet SDK will be integrated together and how developers can come up with various, uh, you know, solutions out there. There are two important features that we are going to release probably in quarter one, 2024. Uh, one is the integration of Copilot in L1X app.com. So think of it as, you know, you bring in your data, you start interacting um, on the chain. So um, right now as well, if you look at AI based solutions, um, you know, it's pretty scattered, right? So if you wanted to reply back to an email automatically, if you wanted to, uh, you know, summarize an article, so you got to keep using different solutions for different things. I believe you'll need interoperability for that as well. But anyways, um, I think integrating Copilot on L1X app uh, will help where if you're reading an article, you can summarize it straight away over there. If you're trying to message someone or if you're trying to, you know, make a payment, all those sorts of things. So it'll be exciting to see how Copilot will be used on L1X app.com. Um, but the other feature is mainly for uh, Web2 companies where, um, you know, the data that you bring onto the L1X app.com and, you know, if these Web2 companies integrate the wallet SDK, they will be able to use our API services where if you are trying to log in, you'll be able to log in using the X wallet. And as a business, the benefits I get out of it is I get to see, you know, uh, what kind of a user you are and recommend certain products. But these API uh, services will allow the businesses to verify you because when you import your data, you are importing it from certain applications like Facebook, Gmail, where, um, you know, certain credibility has been established while you are importing your data. So kind of a verification based API and um, you know, also being able to recommend products. So this API system will again be monetized. And if you have a username, uh, you know, you get the rights to these revenue as well. So that's pretty exciting. Um, with regards to the release schedule, um, we are updating the roadmap for L1X app as well on the same L1X app.com website. So probably around end of the day today or tomorrow, you'll be able to see all of these features that I have just talked about. <clears throat> Moving on to the airdrop module, um, you know, we do have the massive airdrop, um, you know, scheduled for 500,000 L1X coins. Um, so the criteria for that is very simple. Either you buy 500 L1X coins or you buy a username, right, uh, to be whitelisted in that particular um, bucket. And there is also some other airdrops coming up which will be, you know, uh, a daily airdrop. Um, I'll let the marketing team announce that. I won't take away their alpha. <clears throat> yeah, so I think um, exciting times ahead. And I'm pretty excited to see how, you know, we can leverage AI into uh, the development cycle as well. For Because right now, while I've been speaking to the developers, one of the biggest challenges that I've seen with the developers is, how does Web3, you know, combine together with AI? Like what's, what's, you know, what does both of these together look like? So the developers wanting to see what this looks like, I think we would be the only layer one out there who would give them a glimpse of this initially. So that's the stance we are taking. And I'm pretty excited because, you know, um, starting off uh, with Web3 and AI together for, um, the incoming developers is something that I think will probably set, uh, you know, the pathway for what L1X could provide to even businesses and, you know, anyone interacting with it, where, um, you know, we will be one of the early adopters of AI into a layer one infrastructure. Definitely some massive stuff there, as I'm sure it's like uh, we need a, a, a 
documented list of things that, and obviously this this will be recorded so we can go back and go through it um, and, and as Kevin said pushed out so that a lot of the features will be updated for you to be able to review and see um, everything that's coming out and I think just from some of the comments I've been seeing it's uh, it's really good to remember that you know we're, we're still in beta and obviously this is a brand new chain um, if you follow any other brand new chains it takes sometimes years for them to even get to a point where things can be built on them let alone for them to operate while people are waiting so to be so far advanced, I think coming into mainnet now with all these features coming on board is is something massive. Um, and I think credit credit to the to the dev team, credit to Kevin, credit credit to the vision, and obviously the rest of the team that's putting in the effort to make all the dots connect so that when we get to, towards this mainnet, that everything can really kick off and be uh, I suppose launching in a way that it's the most effective, and I think the most effective for what we're currently or the market we're currently going into. Like you've got to think of where we are now. Um, especially with the ETF approval, you think now it becomes sort of a, a lot more relative for mainstream things to need the things that you know Kevin and the team are already building. Um, so these things where we're, we're having business applications being able to use uh, the technology there, whereas if you look at other chains, that's not it's not applicable. So it's it's making that that br- well, to, to have, for lack of better words, it's bridging the gap between these two things. Uh, to allow for adoption at a mass pace, and I think that's that's exactly where we need to be. Um, yeah, that, um, sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know if, if you look at the um, you know process of um, the adoption of the internet as well, it all started with sharing information, right? And the space CMS system, you know, takes that same philosophy but applies it to Web three. So I think everyday person will be able to go in there, build this content that they think that they want to build. Um, you know, if you don't want to simple, simply build a profile card, you know, about yourself, um, your social links, and just share it with someone. But at least it gives a pathway to someone who wants to start using Web3 products because, um, you know, pretty frankly, I mean, how many Web3 products are you even using today if you think about it, right? So this is that adoption cycle, and it's a new technology. Um, you know, and it's not a copy paste product. It's a new technology. So um, there will be bugs, there will be um, hiccups, but I think, you know, more importantly, that's where the value gets built up because the more bugs coming in, the faster we solve that, that's where the maturity and the value of the products come in. And again, with the ETF thing, I've got a very different perspective on it. Um, Sure, it does provide credibility, but I think on a long-term perspective, um, you know, it kind of, opens the door for you know bigger players to kind of pump and dump things out there uh, but again you know it's a part of the whole process so let's see how it unfolds um, but yeah um, that's 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 from me yeah and just just to echo that uh, it's something i've been hearing on a lot of the amas I, I know with the gaming projects that have been coming on board and it's exactly as you said how much stuff is actually web3 uh, and that's very relevant in terms of, I think, the gaming thing that they're talking about. It's like everything up until this point. Um, and I know some of the some of the speakers on the AMAs referenced Axie. It's just a picture with some back end code running. It's not, you know, it's not the first person shooter style games that we're seeing on obviously consoles and things like that. But the technology we're building is allowing that that sort of thing to come to life actually in Web three. So it's it's going to take that little bit of time. It's going to take the, the trial and error and the glitches and the bugs and things like that to get everything crisp. Of course it is. And we're at the cutting edge of that. And I think it's, it's worth remembering that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, I remember this comment from Henry Ford, you know, I mean, Henry Ford says this, right? If you ask, if I asked people what they want, they would have said, I want a faster horse. Now, I think that's pretty different in Web3 uh, because I kind of feel that people kind of know what they want, you know, because it's driven by them. So, you know, giving the ability for people to get their username and share information with the, with other people where they own and they kind of control what they share, at least um, initiates that process of content creation on the internet or on Web3 where the users are in control of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um... Yeah, so then to continue on that, uh, I suppose, updates and, and things like that. I know we've obviously, it's been drinking from the higher fire hose hearing from Kevin, but um, Spark, Chief, Crypto, or anything from your ends as well on uh, where, where from your operational end, things are going, like how you see things, how we're looking going into mainnet? 
I'm just throwing it out there. And, and yeah, crypto, you can go first. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Perfect. Um, you know, to kind of follow along with what uh, Kevin was talking about, it's 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 very interesting that if we kind of change the position and look at it from this view, it is, you know, with Web3 and what we're currently in, um, trying to make that evolution from Web2 to Web3, it's, it's interesting because, you know, change will not happen until we start wanting uh, and, and, and expecting projects and developers and things like that to come to a higher standard of things. Um, likewise, it, it also depends on actually forming tools that we can use in our everyday life. Um, that's when we'll start adopting those things. And as we start doing that, that's what helps elevate that higher standard of quality that we're, we're wanting. And as we kind of make this transition, you know, web two to web three, it, it's, it's, it's that interesting thing. And I mean, everybody that's here understands the importance of owning your own data, um, being in control of it, um, allowing people to see uh, the things you want them to see. But also when it comes to the user experience side of it, it is seriously all about being able to customize your own experience. So mine might be different from Kevin, which might be different from Spark and Chief, uh, which might even be different from yours. And uh, if you heard Kevin talk about, you know, the, the customization thing that's going to be coming with the L1X app two, version two, um, this is the first stepping stone into making those things happen. Um, the ecosystem that Kevin and the team are building out with the uh, marketplace that's going to be released where they can build these specific cards that if you want to add them into yours and connect them with with various uh, objects within your C uh, space CMS um, to make your your experience unique that's going to create a, a very unique uh, ecosystem for not only the users but also for the developers to come in and make a passive income likewise with the drag and drop kind of uh, functionality that's going to be coming with this this no code kind of solution it gives the everyday user that doesn't know how to code the opportunity to to feel like they can code to a point where they can start building out things and that's where i feel like the individuals will start taking the stand and start demanding higher standards and start positioning things so that um, we're not seeing as many forks with projects and and just making copies of copies uh, we'll start seeing real innovation start uh, entering into the web3 space and so that's where i get really excited is because uh, the users are going to be the ones that make the change absolutely and just passing over just continue on that that thread spark chief um your thoughts It's actually very hard to, um, uh, to to say anything, but on top of what Kevin and uh, Cryptonaut have said, um, the, the features that are coming up uh, for the app and across, uh, you know, the cross-chain capabilities, things like the Bitcoin um, uh, uh, integration, it's just huge, the, the, the work that's gone on. It's, it, you're quite right, I think, what you said earlier, that uh, um, most chains out there take a couple of years to reach this point. Um, all I know is at the moment, I'm, it's um, head down, bum up for me, trying to get... Um, uh, all the paperwork and everything sorted out with these exchanges, it's just an absolute pain to do. Um, it's just stuff that needs to be done. Um, and we're, yeah, we're getting on with it. Um, we've got some uh, uh, exchanges that are, that are coming online at the moment. Um, we're working through those, just getting the final bits of, um, of confirmations and documentation done. Really boring stuff from me. Yeah, I guess, is there any uh, cheeky alpha drops there about the exchanges you could... Nope. No, no, okay, no worries. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe I might add to that to say um, stay tuned for an announcement tomorrow um, with uh, potentially the first one off the rank. Um, and, um, yeah, look, I, I'd just like to add, you know, uh, maybe some a different perspective of where, we're, you know, we're three weeks away from um, 
for mainnet launch. And I think that's really exciting. I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of excitement come in, uh, even more excitement come into the spaces. Um, you know, as Kevin said, I think it's always great when, when, when Kevin speaks about the development, we can see what's happening and what's getting built. So, you know, to have him here and have him here for the, for the, <clears throat> the upcoming spaces, I think it's exciting as, uh, for the AMAs, I think it's exciting as well. Um, there's promotions going out so with the airdrops and, and we'll be releasing more details around that as well. Um, and yeah, so I, I know like building up to mainnet, there's, there's lots of things that, that are going to be happening. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty exciting atmosphere within the community, even beyond what it normally is. Um, and you know, for the, for the guys that have just turned up or the guys that are, um, that have, that have been here for a while, uh, you know, this is, um, this is a major milestone for us that's coming up. So it's really exciting. I think everyone in the team's excited. I think everyone in the community is excited. Um, and it is a major milestone. It's step one of, of building out an ecosystem that will um, impact not only Layer One X but uh, will impact blockchain as a whole. Um, and you know that that's a journey that we're, we've started and a journey that we'll continue on as well. Absolutely, I think that's it. You know, it's been a good uh, well. I suppose it's nearly nearly six months that we've had uh, the the beta mainnet and so many things have come from where they where where it was you know just from obviously block launch through to now um huge huge changes huge updates so many things coming online and that's it i think everybody's very excited for the next 20 days um sam i just I might pass to you i know we had some community questions and we got a bit of time as well it's probably a great time to jump in and just throw some of those up there as well yeah for sure for sure and uh I would like to say that if anyone would like to jump on the stage, uh, give some suggestions, ask questions to the team, uh, just raise your hand and we'll bring, bring you up. And until that time, I'm going to ask some questions from our community members. Uh, the first one is from NeedX. Uh, when we may expect to see the EVM source and destination smart contracts be verified on chain? Yeah, I can. I can. Uh... You know, take that. <clears throat> so the source and the destination contracts for the uh, liquidity provision uh, are audited by Mythix, and you know they will be released uh, when we open source the code for the uh, you know uh, L1X code as well. So <clears throat> you have to understand that the one of the reasons that we can't you know release these kind of code is because it contains a lot of information about even the XDOC contracts. And while we, you know, make sure that we are um, updating the L1X code on a day-to-day -day basis and making sure that, uh, you know, any um, unknown or unexpected calls made to the L1X core uh, does not result into liquidity drain, um, that's the reason. Uh, and, you know, I would rather make sure that things are audited before they go out. So even the L1X core is being audited at the moment. So, yeah, by the end of the month. Yeah, I think uh, hopefully that answers your uh, your question, Nidex. Uh, I'm going to go for the second question. Uh, are users allowed to port the content over and publish it uh, elsewhere? So this is in context uh, with the medium content. Um, yep, that's a good, very good point. So you will, now medium does not um, have an API system um, over there, but what we have done is, uh, we have created a way where you will be able to first verify um, using, you know, either Facebook or uh, LinkedIn that the name of your Medium article or your profile on Medium is the same and the email uh, corresponds to the one that you have used on any of these social websites. Once you confirm that, there is a link where you can put the Medium article uh, and, uh, you know, download that as an NFT. Um, so this is to make sure that you are the owner of the content, but you will be able to download that content straight away. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, I, I see one more question and uh, uh, Grun F asks, uh, hopefully I'm not butchering the name. How many developers do you have? <laughs> I think Kevin works 24 um, hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't work 24 hours a day, but uh, <laughs> I wish I could if somebody invents a pill that I don't need to sleep. Um, yeah, but um, we've got around 14 
developers in the core so who are explicitly working on or exclusively working on the l1x core infrastructure um, the way the team is divided is there is a consensus team there is a vm team there is an xtalk team and there is an api or a database team as well and on the l1x app.com exclusively there are around 15 uh, developers working so all in all um, only around 28 to 29 developers now um, just you know, uh, to give you a perspective or a comparison, um, you know, other layer ones have more than, you know, around 80 to 90 developers um, in their later stages. In the beginning, of course, they've got heaps of them around. And we don't, uh, you know, compare, comparing the resources, probably we are at like maybe less than 5% of the resources that would actually be required if a project like this is undertaken. So. We have to be, uh, you know, careful in how we provide these resources towards the product, but hoping that you know once the protocol goes out and improvement proposals are are, are uh, scheduled, there would be developers who want to come in and you know contribute. Awesome, yeah. So if any of you guys are keen to working with Layer One X, send in your resumes. Uh, if, I think if, one last. Part yeah, sorry. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Just on that, if if there if you know any application developers or even front end developers, graphics designers, and even you know core devs who are you know uh, pretty uh, you know veterans in Rust, please reach out to me on my email. You already have it, which is Kevin at L1X dot Foundation. Uh, we could work on an L1X coin remuneration schedule. If you have a full time job and if you want to just learn about. Uh, the protocol and contribute a few hours a day. Happy to look at it in that perspective as well. Well, there you go. Lots of opportunities in layer one X. Uh, one last final question is from T. Yeah, that's the username. Uh, will there be bug bounties offered? Uh, to which Chief mentioned that yes, there will be. So, Kevin, would you like to expand a bit more on that? Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the way we're going to work this out is, um, you know, once the updated um, dev portal um, along with the updated documentation goes out, um, while the developers build on the local net or, you know, the dev net or main net, and they find any optimization in the code or, you know, uh, minor bugs or major bugs, um, in these three different categories, bug bounties will be provided. So optimization, minor and major, and we have, uh, you know, the dev pool out of which we will be using this to provide to the developers in terms of bug bounty. But uh, what is also going to happen is on the L1X app, we will have a feedback mechanism like the version two. And there will be people with usernames will be invited to use. And when you provide those feedbacks in there um, and we, you know, utilize those feedbacks, there will be, um, you know, a feedback mechanism or a, or a, like a, you know, bounty, if you want to call it, that will be provided as well. So not only developers, but even everyday Web3 users with usernames will be getting a coins bounty. I think uh, this is the first where an average user who's not, a, let's say, uh, a developer or or more, uh, you know, learned in coding gets a chance to also earn bug bounties. So yeah, I think that's a huge win for uh, for anyone that has a username in L1X. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Joe, I think uh, those are the end of the questions. Uh, do you see any more questions? Uh, just, uh, I think there's a, a couple from the community. I think these, I know we're hashed over these a little bit, but I think it's good to sort of get an update um, and, and a question that, that quantifies a few things too. I know we've answered, is it possible for L1X to connect to any chain? And in short, the answer is yes, but to quantify, um, are there any that are not possible, such as parachains like Polkadot or Cosmos or, or namely injective um, blockchain? Uh, like, what are the, what are the difficulties there? Are there difficulties? Is it is it different from chain to chain? I mean, of course, it would be in a way, but um, yeah, is there a sort of a wrap statement on that? Yeah. Um, okay. So you know, there are two parts to this. The first part is when you talk about you know connectivity what exact connectivity are you seeking from that chain? Because, um, you know, um, apart from the token transfers, um, the other angle over there is, you know, your ability where businesses have already built on that chain and now they want to onboard users from the other chain or 
they want to interact with the other chain for some other feature set uh, that is possible with i think if there are top 20 you know layer ones out there it's possible with each and every one of them and again it's a resource thing like we could you know in less than three weeks we could connect to any chain we wanted even private chains and the other angle to that is you know i, I kind of think that the whole interoperability angle will be moving towards like a validation angle where users from each and every different chains or any technology that's utilizing decentralized ledger technology, um, even Web2 companies adopting this will be requiring some kind of validation of this user where are you that same user who are trying to access this resource or if you have asset somewhere else, do you actually own that asset or not? So these kind of validation interop is where, you know, our XTOC flourishes as well. And at the same time, you know, uh, the Galaxy cards and the API system that we are building with L1X app will be combined together with XTOC to provide that interop angle to businesses. Yeah, excellent answer. Um, and just uh, one more regarding username uh, versus profile name. I know you can, you can set yourself a profile name, obviously, in the L1X app. Um, and obviously, there's the NFT with the username. Uh, so the question is, will you be able to take advantage of the digital ID and health link and other projects with the profile name, or do you have to have a username um, in order to participate in those? Yeah. Um, so think of the username as um, you know your uh, you know login name of your computer, right? So the moment you start your computer, you have your login name, and then the whole environment for you is set up in that way. So if you want to leverage, uh, you know, features or projects building on L1X app, uh, sorry, on L1X app, yeah, and also on the core, and you want to seamlessly use those features, I think the username will be required because username acts as the mediator of you owning your information, uh, you know, privately and sh sharing it securely with the other people. So the profile name, you know, um, is I think going to be uh, moved out, and it's going to be mainly your username. But we also have something called as AKA, which is you know what are you called as. So if somebody is you know you share something with someone, it'll be your username going out, um, and your first and last name, which you will be verifying by you know connecting any of these applications, so that we reduce the spamming stuff or you know someone trying to pretend they are somebody else. Yeah, awesome. I, I think that's um, mostly some of the ones that I, I've grabbed from there. Uh... I was just going to add to what Kevin was saying is just that it's, usernames are a great way for you to basically break up maybe your personal investments versus maybe you do work on work on a project um, you could break it down that way, or you could even have a, a username for a gamer tag, which allows you to basically segment out your data as well. Um, so then that way it makes it a lot easier to kind of manage everything. Yeah, um, just to quickly add on that, if you want to learn a little bit more about, you know, the username and the space CMS, we have, um, you know, um, a streaming that we will be doing tomorrow evening, 4 p.m. AWSD. So please register for that. It, at, at least maybe just listen to it if you don't want to see the video. It will just give you a good perspective on, you know, what the space CMS is, how does it integrate with your username, and how you can start leveraging it. Absolutely. I recommend everybody jump on that. I, I think, um, you know, knowledge is power, right? The more we can learn about it, the more we, we can understand, the better you can utilize it. And once again, to, to come back to an original point, we're at the cutting edge here. You're the first people, first users, first movers, and there is always an advantage in that aspect. Uh, Spark. Yeah, I just wanted to note, I'm going to drop, uh, I know we've got an announcement for the upcoming webinar um, about the CMS, and, 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 I, and I, I agree with what, you're, what the point you just made, Joe. Education around what we're building with Layer One X is really key to understanding the bigger picture of all, how all these components fit in together. So I'm just going to drop something in the chat as well, just a link to that, so you can register um, for the upcoming, which is tomorrow. Um, just so yeah, if uh, if you're interested in understanding the bigger picture of the ecosystem, and then obviously the specifics around CMS. 
uh, I think it's a really important one to to catch up um, and and understand what's what's going on with CMS. What what impact does it have? How does it work? All those sort of things. So uh, let me chuck something in the chat and um, and and put that here as well. Awesome. Um, I just have to have one cheeky dig at Chief. You need to get that wig from that picture because I just think that that is so funny, and I am very much here for G Haven's uh, banter in the chat at the moment. Um, Sleazy, I see you've got up here for. Is that, um, is that not I, Chief? Is that not Chief in his early, in his younger days? I, I thought maybe that was he had Chief. Curls. I, I don't know. I, yes. I don't know. Maybe that's what he looked like. Blowing locks. Yeah, he always looked like a, a young Michael Bolton. I'm showing my yeah, age, you, but yeah. Yeah, you lot are never getting photos of my childhood. Trust me. You, you'll, you'll turn it into an absolute abortion. So. We need those gorgeous locks. <laughs> it's a fantastic yeah, it picture. nothing like um, that. I wasn't curly haired. Yeah. Oh, that's disappointing. Well, wig it is then, I guess, a wig. Um, Sleazy, I see we've got you up here. Um, Sleazy is obviously a very uh, prominent member of our community and helps us with a lot of time-stamped videos. Um, do you have some questions for us, good sir? Uh, yes, in fact, I do. Thanks for the shout out, by the way. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, so Kevin mentioned, recently mentioned something about that even if you can contribute only an hour, two hours a day, that's already a big help. So I remember a situation where, shout out to Noob in Gear, he figured out a way to potentially tweak one of the front end things to solve one of the ways uh, people got problems with uh, interacting with the L1X app. Is that something that would be helpful if uh, he were to send it to you? So in just in case I managed to figure out something, would this be helpful if I send something? Yeah, I mean, um, anything that can help us optimize L1X app and L1X core definitely, uh, you know, will be helpful. But again, uh, you know, we majority of the times what happens, like, you know, we have these things listed and queued up now. We are under-resourced, uh, you know, if you want to, you know, simply put it. So we are we are trying our best to optimize it as much as we can. But anything coming from the community which goes into the, you know, uh, optimization or bug solving is definitely helpful. I think if you send it directly to my email, that's the fastest way you can get a response from me straight away. Uh, because any dev related um, immediate work, uh, you know, email is the way that I respond back to. Perfect. Fantastic, Salizzi. It's great to have you up here. Like I said, it's uh, one of our OG members and obviously helps us out a lot with his uh, timestamp videos. Um, I think. Yeah, we've obviously gone through a few questions. We've had some huge uh, updates. And, and I, like I say, every time I think that the, the whole team gets on, it's like drinking from a fire hose with the amount of information that we get. Um, and back to the, to the previous statement, you know, knowledge is power. The more we can learn about how everything will work, how everything integrates, what uh, the vision looks like going forward, the better setup you can be inside the L1X ecosystem. Like I say, you're at the pointy end of the spear. It's a good place to be. Um, I think, yeah, knowing... Uh, where we're at with time, if we want to start on our closing statements, and, and Kevin, we might start with you, so that way you can uh, you can head off and and um, get get back to your thirty seven screens and your thirty six hour a day workload. Uh, well, yeah, we'll kick off there. Yeah, um, look, I think <clears throat> um, you know to get started, um, I definitely recommend you know um, get a username and you know wait for the uh, space CMS. Uh, to come out sometime next week for early adopters. And at the same time, I'm pretty proud of, you know, what we have achieved in the last 24 months with the resources we had um, at, you know, in hand. And I'm looking forward to um, coming regularly on the community and, you know, uh, somehow I'm convinced that I think I need to be, you know, more onto the socials as well, uh, speaking to the community. I'm looking forward to speaking with you all, um, you know, in this year. Fantastic. We appreciate having you here, um, Kevin. It's always excellent insights. And I think um, it, it had to have that uh, dev level perspective and obviously founder level perspective on, on everything where we're going. I know the community appreciates having um, just, just that direct insight as well. So thanks for coming. Thank you. 
Uh, Crypto North Spark, Chief, who'd like to uh, jump in next? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I think um, just to have a look in the comments, I think potentially maybe the first meme coin on L1X is going to be Young Chief NFT. Um, oh. You know, thumbs up for that. Oh if, if, if that's, that's going to be um, the, uh, I'll, be I'll the one. Let, but, uh, I'll let Spark choose the photo. I've got a couple sitting on my screen right now. Sleazy's come in with the Power Ranger Chief. Oh, that's, yeah. Oh, no, I think that, no, no, maybe no. a range. Maybe there's a collection. A collection of Chief <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> yeah. um, but lot, look, uh, yeah, look, I think to echo... Um, I think to echo Kevin's statement um, about, you know, getting involved, getting active, um, you know, um, and I, it's great. Uh, I think, you know, having Sleazy jump up, shout out to Sleazy, um, um, you know, and and ask about how can, how can um, you know, we get feedback on the app. It, it is a community process, right? So, um, you know, even when you look at like some, something like a Solana, right, which le launched in early 2020, um, they went through a process there and I, um, in terms of, you know, the, effect, the efficiency around their chain. So this is a process as well in terms of user experience and, and everything like that with um, with the L1X app. So input is is great. And I think, you know, input from community is really valuable. Uh, but yeah, once again, you know, um, being active, jump on there, get your username. Um, they'll be extremely powerful, those usernames. Um, and yeah, no, let's let's really enjoy um, the next three weeks and beyond as we as we come up to mainnet launch. I think that's definitely a key point. Um, everybody enjoy yourselves. You know, it's a we we're at a, an unprecedented point of of the blockchain, so it's a it's all excitement from here. I think. Um, yeah, who who would like to go next? We're scared, Chief. Now, Chief doesn't want to. Uh, Chief doesn't want to comment. He's, he's too busy making his meme coins. No, I'm grumpy with you, lot. <clears throat> no, um, look, I think um, we've we've had had a lot of information from Kevin today about the upcoming um, uh, capabilities that we're launching. Um, I think um, people. The best suggestion I can give people is go back and just have a listen to a lot of what Kevin has said today, um, because it's absolutely fascinating. You start getting a picture of the capabilities that we're bringing in and where we're going with the with uh, layer one x and and not just as a foundation but then you look at the app you look at um, you know the widget and all those other things coming the space cards um the the influencer side being able to create your own profile all those capabilities are coming together and look at the bigger picture of what that's doing and what the what that's going to do uh, web3 will bring to um the world uh, and you start looking at all those other solutions out there uh, on Web2, and you realize that they're all just piecemeal. They're all just like cryptos, uh, you know, different blockchains are today, they're all siloed. All those various apps and everything else out there in Web2 today is siloed. You know, you've got to have a separate login for, uh, uh, you know, for YouTube and for, um, uh, for Twitter and for Facebook and all this. What about bringing all those capabilities together um, and securing them so that you're not, you know, you, you, your um, your system's actually being secured in a much better manner and each system is securing the other. There's so many things in there that, that we can introduce and, and that we are introducing um, over the coming months that, that are going to provide that uh, capability. Absolutely fantastic. And I think uh, by process of elimination, uh, Cryptonaut, you must be next. Um, I think we're all pretty excited for the end of this month, but I can only imagine what Kevin's going through right now. Uh, I mean, this is a couple of year journey for him to get to where we're at right now. And, uh, I mean, most of us, uh, have only been around for, for about a year, except for Spark and Chief, they've been around a little bit longer. In that sense, and and uh, it's it's such an exciting time um, to see a vision come to fruition, and uh, the potential of where it could go is is very exciting. But uh, I think that now is a great time not to sit back and relax. Now is the time to to get out there and 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 open our mouths and talk to more and more people. Um, it, we've we've done quite a few different AMAs. Over the last few weeks, uh, where we host them, and we've also joined quite a few others 
as well. And uh, just wanted to say thanks for your support on those. Uh, each and every one that we do just broadens that reach that we can get to new people and new communities and new projects. And so uh, thank you for retweeting. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for opening your mouth uh, because we wouldn't be where we're at today without you guys. And so much love for the community. Um, can't wait. We're in this together. Let's make it happen. 100%. Uh, exactly. Just said, uh, obviously, there's Kevin and, and apparently way, way back there was Chief uh, as well. I, I couldn't help myself. That had to be said. I just <laughs> I had to say that. Um, Sam, do you, do you want to throw something in as well while you're up on stage? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I think uh, it's important to know that uh, all of us are here for for a reason. And uh, I think uh, the community, and I have reiterated this a lot of times, and I think the community is most uh, the most important part of a project because uh, without you guys, we wouldn't have reached the where we have reached right now. And uh, speaking at the community, uh, from a community perspective, I think... Uh, we have a uh, lots of interesting things coming, not only from the develop developing side, but also from community side. We have the rate channel, we have the Zili, we have uh, lots of marketing campaigns and stuff like that. So yeah, make sure you keep an eye on the events channel as well as the announcement channel. Uh, we also have Twitter spaces going on regularly. So yeah, thank you for everyone that has been <coughs> that has been <laughs> attending those X spaces and been supporting us. Yeah. So thank you for from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, I guess I'll just wrap up there. Um, I'd like to pass my thanks on, obviously, as well. I, I see all you guys as well staying up to ridiculous o'clock. You know, we're on, on the AMAs at midnight my time, and I see a heap of Australians in there. And, and then, obviously, the stuff that's reasonable time for us Australian types, you guys that are up on the other side of the world, you know, putting in that extra effort and then having, having you attend all these events throughout the week knowing that you also have stuff that goes on in real life. You know, we appreciate seeing you all here, part of the community. It's, it's big for us, and obviously it's big for you guys too. Um, and we're only 20 days away. 20 days away. I just checked. I just checked ahead in the calendar. Obviously, uh, we will have one one of these X lives one day before that mainnet launch, and it, that's uh, that's, I feel like that would have to be party time. So... Yeah, one, once again, big shout out to everybody. Thanks for everybody for getting on. Uh, we will continue to have these obviously on a weekly basis and get as many updates through as we can. Uh, it's really good to hear that Kevin will be uh, with us more frequently so we can get those pointed straight to date updates of, of what's what's happening. And especially for the next 20 days, I think there'll be a lot coming on board. There'll be a lot of stuff getting pushed out. So um, just keep your eyes peeled on the stuff we've got coming up. Uh, and I think that we'll just wrap it there. Once again, thanks everybody for coming. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone. Thanks.